Movies these days, and to be honest, forever, often love to break the fourth wall and make subtle and sometimes not so subtle meta references, and if we were to do a video on all of them, we'd probably be here all day. That's why we're going to take a look at only 15 meta moments you might have missed in some movies you probably love. Let's take a look. As you know, Avengers Endgame involves the remaining team members using time travel to go back and defeat Thanos. When discussing the concept of time travel, they make reference to many different movies, such as Back to the Future. But the most meta time travel movie they reference is Hot Tub Time Machine, which alongside John Cusack, Craig Robinson, Rob Corddry, and Clark Duke starred none other than the Winter Soldier himself, Sebastian Stan. This creates somewhat of a paradox, but in a convention appearance, Sebastian Stan said that he does actually exist in the MCU, and Bucky Barnes just happens to look a lot like him. You know, like those old Renaissance paintings of Keanu Reeves. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is a hilarious, emotional, and eye-popping experience packed full of meta-humor and pop culture references. With my personal favorite being the moment that Spider-Ham says, That's all, folks. Is he allowed to say that? But there are also a ton of references to other Spidey movies, such as the Sam Raimi series, as Johnson's Spider-Man is basically a loose version of the Maguire Spider-Man, and even makes a joke at his expense. As he goes through his life story, at one point it cuts to him dancing in a similar and forever meme-worthy style of Maguire in Spider-Man 3, with Johnson saying, we don't talk about that much. Also, who else wants to hear the full Spider-Man Christmas album? It can't just be me, right? How can we do this video and not make a reference to Deadpool? I mean, seriously, that whole movie is about meta humor and fourth wall breaks. There are also constantly references to the X-Men and Reynolds' frenemy Hugh Jackman, but the best meta joke has to be the moment that Colossus says, you will come talk to Professor Xavier, to which Deadpool replies, McAvoy or Stewart. These timelines are so confusing. Who knows? With the X-Men heading to the MCU, maybe it'll be a different actor entirely. Wreck-It Ralph is another one who makes tons of pop culture references and to the video game industry. But in the sequel, Ralph Breaks the Internet, they go even further, with Ralph and Vanellope stepping into the internet and finding themselves on Oh My Disney amongst a slew of other Disney characters. But the most meta references come when Vanellope steps into a room full of Disney princesses including Ariel, Elsa, Moana, Pocahontas, Rapunzel, Tiana, and Snow White, just to name a few. But the references only go up from there as they go through the typical Disney princess tropes and is a fun scene for anyone who's a big Disney fan. Keeping on the Disney train for a moment, in Emperor's New Groove, as Cusco, Pacha, Yzma, and Kronk race back to the capital, their progress is tracked by a map with red and blue lines used to represent both pairs. But despite Pacha and Cusco being in the lead, Yzma and Kronk still manage to get to the capital and Yzma's secret lab first. When Pacha and Cusco question how they got there first, even Yzma and Kronk are confused, with Kronk even saying, Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. Like Emperor's New Groove, Hercules is another Disney cult classic stuffed full of meta references, such as Hades saying, Guy, guy, relax. It's only halftime. At the exact halfway mark in the movie. More meta humor comes with the use of merchandising. As Hercules becomes a celebrity, merchandise of his is generated from branded Air Herc sandals, which are an obvious reference to Air Jordans, and even Hercules-styled drinks. Keeping on the Disney meta theme, Zootopia is another movie with some pretty funny references, such as the little nod to Breaking Bad with the Rams, Walt, and Jesse. But the best and most meta moment comes in the form of all the bootleg titles we see, which make reference to a number of other Disney movies, such as Floats in 2, Meowana, Pig Hero 6, Wrangled, and Wreck-It Rhino. Now moving away from Disney, but keeping on with beloved animated movies, Shrek is another movie that is constantly poking fun and making subtle jokes that break the fourth wall. While there are loads of subtle references to movies and shows like Babe and Cops, the best meta reference has to be Duloc and how it parodies Disneyland with all the merchandise shops, lines to get in, and the It's a Small World gag with the small dolls. As the years have gone by, Chris Pratt has become a bigger and bigger leading man, with him playing the central role in many franchises, such as Emmett in the Lego Movie. In the sequel, however, not only does Pratt play Emmett, but he plays a second character, Rex Danger Vest. The character of Rex is basically just a reference to Chris Pratt himself and some of the major characters he's played in movies he's appeared in, such as Jurassic World and Guardians of the Galaxy. 
What makes Christopher Nolan's mind-bending movie Inception even more detailed is the fact that the whole movie is basically a reference to movies and movie making inside of a movie. As Cobb walks and talks with Ariadne, he basically details cinema and the spectacle of film. The members of the heist can even be seen as particular members of a film crew, and the movie even opens with the main character pitching the story's central concept. Edgar Wright's Cornetto trilogy is one of the most hilarious and beloved trilogies for many reasons, but one of them is its heavy use of foreshadowing. In Shaun of the Dead, Ed basically details the whole storyline of the movie as he plans out the next day, while the world's end opening montage, where Gary recounts the gang's original attempt at the Golden Mile, basically lays out the plot of their second attempt beat by beat. But one of the best meta references comes in the sequel Hot Fuzz, when they reveal the plot twist immediately in the moment Nicholas says, With respect, sir, you can't just make people disappear. To which the chief inspector replies, Yes, I can. I'm the chief inspector. Like Deadpool, Monty Python and the Holy Grail is another hilarious movie with tons and tons of fourth wall breaks, whether it be future characters telling present characters to get on with it, the endless running night scene, or references to the Python's acting or writing, or just the ending in general when they all get arrested. But one of the best moments comes in the use of sound effects, with the Pythons using coconuts knocking together to emulate the sound of hooves. Apparently, the plan was originally to have horses in the movie, but due to budget constraints, they had to instead opt for an extremely meta and hilarious joke. Halt! The Muppets are another group of comedic geniuses who love to break the fourth wall and have done so for some time in the likes of movies like Christmas Carol and Treasure Island. The film itself is mainly presented within the framing device of the characters watching a movie, but there are also a number of other direct fourth wall breaks, with Kermit telling Fozzie not to bore the audience, Sweetums literally breaking the fourth wall, and Animal, like Ferris Bueller, telling the audience to go home at the end. Cabin in the Woods. It's a movie which is full out parody and is constantly making meta references to the horror genre and overall make a reference to every slasher trope. The characters themselves are all clear and obvious stereotypes which only grow bigger as the movie progresses, while the movie then splits off into multiple horror subgenres. Another horror parody that uses subtle satirical beats is Wes Craven's Scream. The movie does this by both operating as its own horror movie, but commentating on typical tropes in the horror genre, with the opening call made from the killer to Drew Barrymore being a perfect example of this, as the scene plays out just like the killer says it will. And finally, quick spoiler warning for Memories of Murder. The movie is about a real-life serial killer in South Korea, and when Bong Joon-ho's masterpiece was released in 2003, the case was still open. So, the movie ends with the film's lead, Detective Park, looking into the camera at the audience, suggesting that the killer is still out there and could be watching this movie.